Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today, we are going to take a look at the gondola and how to speed it up during long straight tracks. Alright, so we have the gondola here and we want to make sure that we make the gondola speed up as fast as it can during a long track. For an example, here, where I created a track straight all the way down here about 200 plus blocks roughly and it has a bit of a turn and then another turn and another straight track so what we want to do is make sure the gondola can go as quick as possible during the straight tracks slow down at the turns so that it doesn't break anything so to do that i had to create the sensors so that has sensor here and a sensor here and making the whole system a little more compact I removed the front wheels and the back wheels alright to set up the sensors I put it on both sides because one side needs to increase the velocity going forward and the other side needs to decrease the velocity going forward and the velocity is going to be you know different based on which position you have your rotor wheels so right now going forward is actually a negative velocity so if I go into my sensor, the setup options, I put in the group of my rotors and indicate it to decrease velocity because going forward is a negative velocity in this system. But if it's the opposite way, then it's the vice versa. But in order to go faster forward, we set up the action to go negative velocity every time the sensor triggers the blocks over there. And in order to set all that up, first you got to play around the sensor to make sure that your sensor can sense those blocks. So the only real thing I played around with is having a bottom and top extension and the front extension to be longer. Everything else I reduced to 0.1. And in order to detect the blocks, I left the audible proximity alert, took off everything except for detect station and have detect owner. Everything else is pretty much off. So this way, once the system passes by these pillars, each one, it's going to decrease its velocity. Right now, it's set at negative 21. But once it hits this pillar, it's going to hit negative 24. This one's going to be negative 27. And this will be negative 30, which is pretty much the limit of the system itself. And to slow it down, we needed to add another side. So that's why we have this sensor on this side, on the right-hand side, looking this way. So that once it detects the pillar on the right hand side, it's the same setup, but it's going to decrease velocity uh, depending on which rotation you're going. In my case here, it is going to um, be a positive velocity, which is decreasing the system. And on the far end here, as you can see how it's on the right hand side, it's pretty much detecting the three blocks again, and it will slow it down to the negative 21 velocity that I have on here just so that it can make the turn without any issues so it slows down right as it hits closest to the turn and then once it makes back to this turn it's going to sense the blocks here on the left hand side to increase the velocity going forward so in, in this case uh, a negative velocity for this specific system and the only reason why it's on a negative 21 velocity going forward or if you go backwards at 21 velocity, every increment of in increased velocity is 3. So it's all going up by 3. So if you're starting at 0, you hit increase velocity using that button. You go into the system, you see down here in 2 and 3. This is increase and decrease velocity. So if you press the increase velocity or decrease velocity, you see the increments in 3s. So if we're at 0 RPMs, you want to increase velocity it's going to be 3 rpms 6 rpms and so forth so that's why i left that at 21 rpms and once it passes by the pillars it's going to hit up to 30 rpms or in this case negative 30 rpms so they can go as quickly as possible so let's just check out how that works all right so it's ready to go so if i go forward it's going to be a negative 21 velocity as you're going to see right there in the bottom and once it passes the sensors you're going to see it tick to negative 24 hits the next pillar it's going to tick to 27 next pillar it'll hit 30 
And unfortunately, Dirty is the fastest. It's going to go with the rotor wheel system. And that is close to 4 meters per second, as you see here in the bottom left. When I say close, it teeters around 3.8, 3.7, depending on the situation. But yeah, this system is going to be quite slow. And we got to think about how to add speed to this thing, because it'll take forever to run through this course here. All right, so we're approaching the next few pillars here, and that's on the right-hand side, which will make it um, slow it down by increasing the, uh, well, not increasing, by reducing the velocity, but in this case, increasing it because we're currently on the negative 30. So it's going to go down back to negative 21 after it hits back to the third pillar on the far left. So that way, it slows it down, to that negative 21 mark so I can make that turn fairly easily without breaking anything in the system. Then you're gonna see here where it's gonna tick off here, the first one, negative 27, negative 24, negative 21. And that's the speed that it's gonna go through the turn without any issues at all. And then once it rounds out the turns, it's going to meet with the next three pillars on the other side, which is on the left-hand side of the system. And that will increase the speed of the gondola to go forward once again, so that it is negative 30 RPMs. And then, of course, once you want to reverse it, the system works backwards. Um, instead of negatives, it'll be positives, and it'll increase the velocity forward and decrease the velocity for the turns. Yeah, so this system works out pretty well. With the turns, the speed adjustment, the only big issue I have is that traveling at 3.8 meters per second is not ideal for a very long track as I have kind of explained here or, or done here. But we got to find a way to add some speed to this gondola and let's find out how we're going to do that. Alright, so before we begin experimenting with different options for speed during the long track, a quick tip with the sensor is that you can visibly see where the sensor range is if you go into the system. So if you're in the control panel, go to info, show sensor field range, and you go back into the sensor and show on HUD. That way you'll see this line here, which that's what is going to detect uh, whatever you want it to detect or the range of what it can detect. So you can increase this, as I mentioned earlier, through the extend part. Left extend, right extend, bottom extend, and so forth. So if you want this to be longer, you can increase this, and it's going to increase it much longer and to visually see it from there. So that's a quick tip if you guys didn't know how to work a sensor in terms of at least seeing how, the, how far the distance are of your setup is, and hopefully that helps. All right, so... How can we speed this thing up? Um, I don't know. <laughs> the first thought in mind is maybe see if we can add some wheels. But if we add wheels, we have to make these rotor wheels torqueless. If you add wheels in the front and back, we got some speed. But how fast can we go? And I only play with the height offset. I may have should be played with the power setting and, and speed limit. But it looks like it rocks a little bit going fast. Oh. Oh, it's teetering off a little bit. That's not good. Um, maybe I stop it a little bit. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think so. Oh, no, it came off the track. That's not good. <laughs> oh, man. So the wheel system kind of works, but I think it hit at the maximum at 8 meters per second and then start clanging and kind of teetering in a weird, odd way. So that's unfortunate, but that might not be the best idea. For this system all right so let's try this again with the same wheel system um i know we only played with the height offset which was a seemed to work out pretty well so i put the height offset pretty much on the max um probably probably set that a little bit less maybe let's change the power this time so let's just do maybe 10 percent power for now um speed limit we should be okay 
I, I really want to go faster with it to be honest, but I didn't like how it teetered once we started moving um, a little bit faster too. So um, let's see if this works now. If I unpark it and hit forward with less power, it seems to be doing okay moving forward and going faster. We st we're going to breach the past the rotor wheel maximum. It looks like. Nope, we're not. It looks like we're teetering at, at three meters per second. And it's a little slower than the rotor wheel system that we had before. Oh, no. It's actually starting to pick it up the speed. So we got up to four meters per second. And it's slowly climbing and dropping at the same time. So, hmm. Let's see if we can increase the power of the wheels. And let's just say, uh, let's do 20%. All right, so let's try that. So 20% power going forward. It immediately goes past, well, yeah, hit the four meters per second fairly quickly, but it's not going any more than that. So that's a bit of an issue. Hmm. We, it looks like we need more power. <laughs> All right, we're going to put 30% and maybe that's going to hit 5 meters per second, I would think. Yeah, so the 10 increments, it, it's just generally increasing the meters per second. And this one's hitting 5 and 6, which is good. It's a little faster than 3.8, but it's starting to tear a bit, which is a bit dangerous. And we're probably going to break something or fall off the tracks soon oh well okay it's going crazy and we're about to fall off nope we're we're kind of teetering off just by a hair there and oh oh and it's gonna fall all right so it looks like the the maximum speed we're gonna get out of the wheel system is only going to be up to five and six to be kind of safe Anything more than that, it seems to kind of teeter and, and fall off its tracks for whatever reasons. So that might be a bad example of creating the speed. But the good thing is that when we add the wheel power to 20%, the system was going a little bit faster than the 3.8. So it hit close to like 4 or 5 meters per second. So that does increase its timing by a bit. And you have full control of it going fast and slow, especially when you can hit the turns. So let's check out a different option to see if we can increase the speed without it falling off its tracks. Alright, we reset the gondola a little bit. Uh, wheel system works up to a certain point. So anything that goes on the top of 5 and hitting 6 meters per second, the whole system, for whatever reason, starts to teeter a bit. And it's going to fall off its tracks, which is not ideal. So what is the next option? Let's plop on some thrusters. So now we can thrust forward and backwards, I believe. So let's give that a try. All right, so that's thrusting forward. And we can thrust backwards as well to slow it down. All right, so it looks like it's picking up a lot when you go forward. So let's see what our maximum speed is before it falls off the tracks. All right, so we're going at looks like 14 15 and it's going <laughs> diagonally upwards which is not ideal so you know going forward and backwards manually you probably have to tap it so you don't go too crazy let's see if i tap it i'm tapping and reaching about eight and i'm letting go and it's staying on the track but it is freak uh, it is going diagonally upwards which is not good so if we do it backwards it's a bit the same thing. Um, so that's going to be interesting. So what if I add the thrusters a little lower then? So instead of having it up there, we could put it on the gondola system itself. Let's just start adding one for now. Instead of adding two at a time. Two at a time seems like a bit much for the system currently. So let's add that there and get rid of these guys. And see if it still kind of teeters off like that. It might be teetering off like that because it's on the top. Let's see how this works. All right, so back in my chair, we're going to go forward. And we're going 
forward six meters per second. Yep, seven and eight. And it's going a little bit diagonal, but it's not too bad. It's holding pretty well. And we're about 12 and 13. And we haven't fallen off the track. Oh, and there goes the whole system. So we can increase it to about 10 meters per second and a diagonal slope going forward. Or angle, I should say. Until the system breaks. So that's a bit unfortunate. So let's try to fine tune this somehow. Alright, so instead of going forward and backwards manually, maybe we can play with thruster override. So we do increase thrust override and decrease thrust override. We can maybe do a steady speed. So if I increase thrust override there. So I'm at it's going a little bit. Okay, so that's a little more steady. And that's at 2 meters per second so far. It's teetering around 2, going down 1. So if I increase some more, it's going to go up a bit more too, which is perfect. So I must imagine if I just keep going a little bit more, we probably will hit that sweet spot. So right here, it's already not too bad, 385 KNs. We're hitting 7 meters per second. We're teetering a little bit. So here we probably want to decrease it a bit and see how that works. And here we go. We have a system that kind of runs not the smoothest, but a lot faster than 3.8 with the um, thrusters on the bottom. So it looks like it doesn't really matter if it's a thruster on top or on the bottom because it does that angle still. But I think if we go any faster than this, the system will break. Just like before. So let me increase the velocity again. And I think once it hits like that 10, 12 mark, it probably will break the system. So far so good though, which is interesting. Hey, so that's not too bad. Alright, so that's a good test. So let's lower that back to zero. Let's see if it slows down or stops. It actually stops pretty well. And it fixes itself. Alright, so that actually works out pretty well. So, we can create a system with thrusters to increase the override thrusting. So that we can increase the speed past the rotor wheel's limitations of um, that 30 RPMs. So, to prevent that teetering, what if we add the rotor wheels on the bottom? Alright, so we added the rotor wheels. They are set on torqueless as well. So let's see, let's just use manual forward and backwards. It looks like it's okay. Now we could probably test the limitations of it if we go backwards this way and see how fast we can go without it kind of breaking. So it kind of still teeters off. Oh, it actually gets stuck. Huh. That's interesting. So now the system got stuck somehow. I'm not sure how. But I guess I could go forward and backwards to fix it. But here we go. So we're going forward. And we're hitting 6, 7, 8. Oh, it's going to teeter off. So it looks like even if I have the rotor wheel system on the bottom, maybe if I spread them out more, it'll, it'll be a little bit easier or better. All right. So I added the rotor wheels on the bottom further out just to see how that works. Let's just delete this one because we probably don't need this one here. And let's see if it still does that angling, which is kind of weird all the, for the most part. So they are torqueless as well. So let's go forward. All right. So we're going forward. It doesn't want to go too fast. It, it's, it's slowing down on itself. It's actually performing worse than the rotor wheel system itself. It's not good. And we're stuck. Ish. So that is... Very interesting. So what if I did override? It's the system stuck. <laughs> so that's that's kind of the reason why they want to do uh, um the bottom rotor wheels because it makes the system get, kind of get stuck for some reason. So that kind of doesn't work out. We could probably back out to fix it a little bit. Yep, there we go. So it doesn't really do too much. All right, so we are back in our wheeled system, and we added the rotor wheels on the bottom with no torque. 
Let's see if we can increase the speed uh, to a certain point without it breaking or falling off. So, looks good now. 6 meters per second. 7 meters per second. And it kind of slowed down from there. It's not going any faster than that. It, it Because my power is set at 25. Okay, so that's not bad. So, let's slow that thing down. So, the breaking point before was 30% power. So we put 30% power and let's go backwards this time. Let's see if it works out pretty well or not. So we are going backwards, 30% power. And we should get up to maybe seven, seven meters per second, but it's not going anywhere for some reason. It's teetering a little bit faster than the default rotor wheels. Now it's picking up slowly. Okay, so the, the wheel system with the four point of contact with the rotor wheels makes a bit of a difference. So it looks like we're going a lot faster. Well, not a lot. We're at 4.5-ish meters per second, which is a lot faster than 3.8 with the rotor wheel system. But I want to make it go a lot faster and see if it tips over again or teeters off. We're about to hit 5 going forward. And... I think that's about it. Huh. Alright, so if we increase the power even more, let's go increments of 10. So another 40%. We're going 40% and let's see how that works. So now we are quickly reaching 6 meters per second. Nothing's tipping over because the system is preventing it from doing that. We're at 7. We're going to hit the danger zone of 8. That's when it kind of starts to teeter in, in the past. Now we're at 9. Now we're at 10. Now we're, we're teetering again. So at 10, it started to teeter a little off. It's It kind of did a little hop. Um, and now it's starting to sway a little bit again. Okay, so the wheel system actually works decently until a certain meters per second. And that was about 8, eight to 9 is the danger zone where you're going to start flipping. So 30% was ideal. So now I can't even fix this because it's not allowing me to do anything. But if I hit park, it's going to sway a little bit and I'm going to fall off the track once again. So yeah, it's just going crazy. <laughs> Let's look at the system. Swaying back and forth, back and forth and trying to make its way out of the track, which is it's pretty much about to do. Um, so I'm going to end it there and pretty much conclude that, you know, the best way to increase speed would be, yes, either this wheel or the thruster. But ideally, you can't even go too fast. You hit a certain point, which is probably about 8 meters per second, and the whole system goes crazy. So it kind of looks like the best system that won't break anything is going to be the default maximum speed for the rotor wheel system and that travels again close to 3.8 meters per second adding the rest can speed it up but it has issues with the turn and it has issues with kind of breaking the system um, but I didn't try everything if you guys have a suggestion please leave a comment below and maybe I'll give it a try and see if that works out all right, thank you very much for watching. I do have a blast making these videos and, and playing around with experiments with these types of things. Although some of my ideas may not be the best ideas, at least I have fun doing it. So thank you guys again for watching. Please hit that thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and of course, leave us some comments. And always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.